Hi guys! I'm Joanna and welcome back to Macaroon. This is going to be the first slime video on YouTube where you're not actually going to see any slime. Instead, I'm going to show you how to make some amazing slime-inspired DIYs using traditional crafting methods. If you're new here, then please hit that subscribe button to become a Cutinator. This is the new name for the Macaroon and Cute Life Hacks family, which actually came from our German channel, so I'm going to start using it in English as well. Slime has become such a huge trend, and I think there's so much more you can do with it. I particularly love the visual look of slime, which was also the inspiration behind my merchandise collection. The video for that is linked right down here. After creating those paintings, I realized that you can easily make three-dimensional slime pieces as well. So in this video, I'll show you some quick and easy DIYs that you can make with everyday craft supplies. These are things that you won't find in any shops, and they'll also make great Christmas gift ideas or to sell online. So the first DIY is going to be a balloon slime squishy. Balloon slimes are so viral right now and you can't go on Instagram or YouTube without seeing one of these pop up. So I thought, why not make a DIY stress ball using the same design? This craft project is great if you don't like breaking your balloons and you'll also have a lot more fun playing with it. To make this, you'll need some balloons, cornstarch, a plastic bottle and a permanent marker. First of all, cut off the top of your bottle to use as a funnel and then pull the balloon over it. Now you can start filling it with cornstarch. I quickly realized that this was a bit trickier than I thought, so the best method is to actually blow your balloon up first. This stretches out the rubber and makes it much easier to fill. You can also grab a brush handle or pen and then use it to push the cornstarch firmly into the balloon. The more you manage to pack inside, the larger your stress ball will become. Once the balloon is completely full, carefully take it off the bottle. There's going to be a bit of cornstarch coming out, so be sure to hold the end shut to prevent too much from escaping. So here's a comparison between the two balloons. The pink one was where I didn't blow it up before filling it with cornstarch, and you can see how much smaller it is. The purple one was stretched out before filling, and the shape looks a lot nicer. Before you tie the balloon shut, make sure there's absolutely no cornstarch in the upper part here. Stretch the balloon out like this, then twist it once and push the ends between your index and middle fingers to the other side. Now you can simply pull the knot tight and your basic balloon squishy is done. Once again, you can see how different these two look. The pink squishy feels very soft and loose since I just wasn't able to get enough cornstarch inside. The purple one feels a lot firmer and it actually holds its shape when you press or stretch it. You can even make funny faces with it like this. For the final step, you can simply write something on here to make it look like an authentic balloon slime. I think a fun gift idea for a slime fan would be to make a whole bunch of these and write different things onto every balloon, such as glue, shaving foam, or activator. However, since I only have one right now, I'm just gonna go with the obvious and use the word slime. And of course, make sure you let the ink dry completely before you try pressing on it. If you enjoy these DIYs, then be sure to follow me on Instagram as well under my username Macaroon. I've started posting a lot of exclusive content on there which won't be shown on YouTube, such as DIY updates, unused footage, and all kinds of oddly satisfying stuff. One of the things I love and hate about slime is that you can't keep it forever. It looks so beautiful when you're playing with it, but you know that it will eventually flatten out, change color, or dry up. So the great thing about this DIY is that you can make a tiny slime that lasts forever. All you need for this project are some piping tips, clay, acrylic paint, and decorations. I'm going to start with Daiso air dry clay, which is already extremely popular in the slime community. This project also works perfectly well with polymer clay, so if you want to use that, then just be sure to follow the correct baking instructions. First, take a star-shaped piping tip, which you can easily get from any baking section or from online craft shops. We're basically going to make some deco den with fake slime instead of fake whipped cream. 
If you want to know more about this, then please check out my video here, and you can also find tons of tutorials about this on YouTube. Depending on which type of clay you use, you might have to add a tiny bit of water first to make it smoother. Then simply push it through the piping tip and carefully coil the clay together so it looks like a typical swirl of fluffy slime. I noticed that Daiso clay had a slightly crumbly texture that made it a bit difficult to work with. Every type of air dry clay has a slightly different consistency, so try experimenting with different brands. I decided to repeat this step using Claycraft Deco, which is a slightly more expensive paper clay, but it has a much better quality than Daiso clay. Right away, you can see that this clay comes out of the piping tip a lot smoother. It can also be sculpted fairly easily using a toothpick dipped in water, so I spent quite a bit of time on this step working on all the details. For the final slime, I'm using acrylic paint to create a pink color. Then, just like before, push it through the piping tip and arrange everything into a circle. When you're coiling the clay together, try not to squash the texture which gives it that typical slime appearance. Use a toothpick to bring out the ridges and make it look even more realistic. Now you can see a comparison of the three miniature slimes we just made. The Daiso clay one has a fuzzy texture that looks almost like floam or cloud slime. Claycraft Deco is a lot smoother and has the typical look of fluffy slime. You can get really creative here and try mixing together different colors or even mix in some microbees to create foam. In order to turn these slimes to necklace pendants, you'll need to use an eye pin, which you can get from any jewelry supply store. Add a tiny bit of glue to one end and then press it into the clay. Notice which direction I'm turning the eye pin. If you're making necklaces, then the round opening should always be facing sideways, so your pendant lies flat when it's hanging on a chain. Now you can have fun decorating these any way you like. White craft glue is best for this because it dries transparent and it won't dissolve the surface of the paper clay. Simply brush on a thin layer and then add your decorations. For the clay craft slime, I'm using some fake polymer clay sprinkles from Sophie and Toffee. These are also quite easy to make yourself, and I've linked a tutorial for that right here. For the next one, I applied some glue and then sprinkled it with glitter. Just like real slimes, you can create some amazing designs using iridescent flakies, metallic dust, gold leaf, or crystals. For the final one, I'm going to use some polymer clay fruit canes. First, I picked out the exact pieces that I liked, since these are a bit too big to be sprinkled randomly. Then I applied some glue and carefully arranged them one by one onto the slime. This reminds me of a pavlova dessert and it actually looks very edible. Please remember that all miniature food crafts should be kept away from small children or pets, just in case they're actually mistaken for real food. And lastly, I'm just taking a necklace chain. This one is still left over from the Macaroon online shop and attaching the pendants on there. If you have a slime shop, then you can even consider making tiny versions of your best-selling slimes. I'm sure your customers will love to have a piece of their favorite slime which they can keep forever. For the next idea, we're going to make this absolutely stunning DIY phone case that looks exactly like gold leaf slime. This is surprisingly easy to make and you'll only need a phone case, gold leaf and hot glue. I strongly recommend using a paintbrush or makeup brush to handle the gold leaf because it's so fragile and sticks easily to skin. First, slide the brush under the gold leaf like this so you can pick it up easily and then place everything right next to you where you can reach it. This DIY requires a little bit of timing, so it's best to check that you have everything on the table before you get started. You should also find a long thin object like this that looks a bit like a fingertip, because that's what we're going to be poking the slime with. Now hold the glue gun directly above the phone case and start squeezing steadily. You basically want the glue to flow outwards like the shape of a clear slime. Keep going until the glue is close to the edges but not spilling over. Now you have to work quickly but carefully. Lift up the entire sheet of gold leaf and place it over the hot glue. 
Use the brush to smooth down the sides and make sure that everything is evenly covered. You can also push the edges inwards so the slime outline looks perfectly round. Now you need to wait a few minutes for the hot glue to cool down enough so you can poke holes. I found that it helps to hold your hand a few millimeters above the glue. The perfect consistency for making holes is when the gold foil feels very warm but not hot to touch. Take the back of a brush handle or something similar and carefully press it into the glue. The first few attempts might still be a bit sticky, so it helps to use another tool to clean off any extra hot glue. Try to work quickly and steadily so you manage to make all the holes before the glue cools down completely. There's a 30 to 60 second window where the hot glue has the best consistency for poking. This DIY would also look great with rose gold or silver foil. Once everything has cooled completely, take a craft knife and carefully detach any extra gold leaf. Of course, make sure you keep this gold leaf in a safe place so you can reuse it for future slimes or DIYs. I've also linked several of my gold leaf tutorials down below in case you need some inspiration. And now your amazing gold leaf phone case is done! Once again, the materials for this DIY actually cost less than making an actual slime, so it's great value for money. One thing I notice is that the hot glue might detach from the phone case once it's completely hardened. If this happens to you, then just use E6000 or any other strong glue to stick it back on. For the final DIY, we're going to make some earrings that look like clear slime. To make these pendants, you'll need a silicone mold, UV resin, and some glitter. I have more information on UV resin in this video here, and I've also linked all the supplies I use down below. A good tip when it comes to buying glitter is to look at nail art websites. I find that they offer much more variety than the usual glitter you find in craft shops. Spoon a tiny bit into the mold and spread it out slightly. I'm basically trying to imitate the look of clear slime covered with glitter. Now squeeze in some UV resin and use a toothpick to get rid of any air bubbles. By the way, resin is a very broad term that can include many types of modeling materials. This resin is completely different to the two-part resin that I used in my DIY squishy videos, so I just wanted to clear up any confusion in case some people might be thinking they're the same thing. This resin cures in 5 minutes under a UV lamp, or 30 minutes outdoors. Especially if it's a sunny day, you can simply place your mold outside and it will cure even faster in direct sunlight. Since my pieces were so small, they were already hardened after 10 minutes. Now you can simply pop them out of the mold. These look so beautiful considering how simple they were to make. They really resemble miniature blobs of clear slime and you can use them to make all kinds of jewelry. For rings or necklaces, you can simply attach these to the findings right away. However, since I wanted to make earrings, I repeated the resin part so I have two versions of each piece. I'm using some leftover earrings from my online shop, but the easiest way to get findings is to just buy some really cheap earrings and replace the pendants. In my case, I decided to glue the resin directly onto the metal, however you can also attach eye pins and use those instead. Since resin and metal both have very smooth surfaces, it's best to use a strong solvent-based glue such as E6000. Then leave your earrings to dry and make sure they're positioned in such a way that the pendants can't accidentally slide out of place. And now your clear slime earrings are done. I love the slightly abstract design which makes these really wearable with all kinds of outfits. So I hope you enjoyed these slime-inspired craft projects. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as well to get all of my updates. For instance, I was so busy in November and wasn't able to upload that much to YouTube, but I've been posting on my Instagram stories every day. So if you follow me there, then you'll always know what I'm up to and when new videos are going to come out. This is Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!